This will be a take two I didn't want to do. Let's get on with it. The chemical elements are defined and named based on the number of protons as its atomic number as well. And this causes the number of electrons in its neutral charged state. The number of protons and neutrons combined is the atomic mass. The neutrons can be any number, and the electrons can be a different number than is ideal, at that which point it would be ionized or not in an electrically neutral state. Because the protons are the only thing we care about, because the electrons on the outside determine its chemical properties, you can have vastly different elements behavior on some level, but on a chemical level, they behave the same. That includes whether or not they're atomically stable. They can still chemically act the same. A periodic table can be derived that shows the relationships between the elements' properties and predict chemical properties and behaviors of elements and their interactions in some ways. This is the reason the periodic table looks so weird. It's a left to right layout of columns or groups of elements based on having the same number of electrons in a particular subshell. An atom with a smaller number of electrons doesn't need to, you know, take up lots and lots of shells. The smaller shell on the inside only holds a certain number, and then the next shell up might hold more. Also, they have extra subshells within these ranges, but the general number is the same. At least that's the essential way of doing it. This gets complicated, but here we go. When an electron shell is filled, it causes a new electron shell to be started. So the table gains a new top to bottom row or period. That's why the periodic table is set. If you start with hydrogen over here and increase it to helium, you get this line of elements over here that don't have the same number of electrons, but the same type of shell status. The next one has a larger number of spots in it, but there's this big dead space where it doesn't have this in here. It's not because it's a missing element, it's because it has a limit that's a little bit bigger than two electrons. You see, it has one electron, has a full electron shell on the outside, that's all. Over here, the next shell has six, for instance, or whatever. So there's duck duck, and then it jumps over here, and there's no in the between spot. So here we go. The maximum number of electrons in each shell counted from the inside out is 1, 6, 10, 14, 18. But there are subshells. Um, the higher the subshells, uh, the more energy per electron is held. The calculation approximately, this is all approximate. The nth shell, let's say third, can hold up to two times that number squared. So if we're on the third shell, square it. That's uh, nine. Two times it should be 18 or something like that. I'm, I'm probably screwing it up. Now these are notes I took. They're not accurate. <laughs> but uh, I'm just dumping this here. You can read the links below. This is me showing you an example of me making a bunch of notes and then not editing them. Okay, here we go. I thought this would be fun. It's more annoying than anything because I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, here we go. Next. <clears throat> if the outermost electron shell is closed, filled, completed, or has no free electrons in last shell or valence orbit, it has a valency of zero. What that means is that the outer shell can hold a certain number maximum, and if you just add one more, it has to have another shell. This sometimes represents an energy level requirement of it having to be an element that requires more energy to push it together, I guess. Remember, the interior of the atom doesn't have to have this arrangement, but it does have to have some sort of balance with the neutrons. But anyway, if it doesn't have any empty spaces, electron cannot participate in the formation of other bonds because it doesn't have a reason to, because it would need a dead space for an electron to fall into or share with another. Group 18 is the noble gases, and they're the least chemically reactive. And the lightest one is helium, because its outer shell is also the first shell, and it only needs two. Hydrogen is much more reactive, but only has a valency of one, because it's only got one dead space in the outer shell. 
other elements can be heavier and have the same valency factor. This is the bonding factor. If there are free electrons in the last shell or valence orbit exterior layer, then these are primarily responsible for the interaction of atoms and formation of chemical bonds. An element valency or valence is only a measure of its combining power with other atoms when it forms a chemical compound or molecule. And you can also start off with an element that has almost no reactivity to it. it might even be a full shell. But you might put another one next to it that needs one more and they could share in a very unstable way. <clears throat> or they could share in a stable way. Let's talk about that. The number of electrons that an atom uses in bonding is called the valence number. Zero or a positive number. However, oxidization state can also be plus or minus based on whether or not it's further over here or further over here on that chart. It gives you the number of valence electrons it has gained or lost plus or minus number. This is mostly during the process of it being pumping part of a molecule. So there are different meanings for this. Many elements have a common valence related to their position on the periodic table. Mostly because, obviously, as they're moving across, this creates, you know, plus or minus value relatively, that sort of thing. Now, I'm probably getting about 80% of this wrong. The reason for this is this is entertaining, because I wrote this big, long thing here, and I have no use for it because I did a video completely on a different subject matter. I came at it from a different angle, but let's dump this. And again, if I'm wrong, just correct me, and I'll just write in a new correction. What I say here can't be corrected later, because YouTube Editor doesn't do that anymore. The main group elements have valence electrons that can only exist on the outermost electron shell. They're more simplified. A transition metal, valence electrons, can exist on the outermost layer. <laughs> and an inner electron shell, like a partially filled D subshell. Obviously, this would mostly be in the heavier elements, and this is metallic elements. If a chemical bond involves the sharing of electrons in pairs <coughs> between atoms, it's a covalent or molecular bond, usually considered much more stable. If atoms in the bond contribute one valence electron in order to form a shared pair, this is a single covalent bond, or a single bond versus double bond, or whatever. <coughs> Each of these allows the atom to attain an equivalent of a full outer shell corresponding to a stable low reaction electron configuration, becoming less reactive and making a stable compound. A stable balance of attractive and repulsive forces between atoms. In contrast, electrocovalence or ionic bonding shares one extra electron between atoms in order to obtain a full valence shell for both atoms and causes them not to be balanced. Now we'll get up to oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16 and it's, sub, it's sometimes called the chalogens, like halogens, and it's called chalogens. And the atom grouping is 2 and 6. <clears throat> it has a valence number on the outside because it doesn't have 8 total. Valence number of 2, 1, 0, or plus and minus you know, or minus one and two as well. <coughs> now, I'm not sure about any of this. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm not accurate about that. Because its outermost shell has a six electrons and would need two electrons to complete its octet or outer layer. Outer layer. This is caused by atomic its atomic number and the number of protons. Now, I've gotten this number wrong six times. I'm not going to quote it back. The Bohr model you'll see in the video's thumbnail will show it. <sighs> Hydrogen has a valence of one. Oxygen has a valence of two. While bonding two hydrogens in water to itself, however, it has zero as a compound. But it's unbalanced in a way because it causes the electrons at the outer edge of the hydrogen atom and to, to have a kind of electrical polarity to it which can be taken advantage of. That's how microwaves do stuff. At least that's the idea. Combined, O2 has eight valence electrons, 
acting like a big, ele a big atom. It's 21% of the volume of the air, approximately. Covalent bonding unit count of 1. Hydrogen bond acceptor count, 2. <sighs> now, here we go. The oxygen atom has 6 electrons in its outermost orbit. Its valency is 2. Two electrons from each, hydro uh, each oxygen atom could be shared between two oxygen atoms in a double bond. Two oxygen atoms sharing electrons to form a complete shell within each atom. The shared bonding is so-called covalent bonding. Question. Does the oxygen compound, O2, have a completely filled valence shell collectively or not? <clears throat> Does it have a valence electron set that can be manipulated or affected by something? That's about it. Actually, I went the other route and actually looked up what the reactions are and came at it from a different angle for the other video, but I thought I'd post it here. Now, I know most of this has errors in it because I didn't bother checking most of this. I don't even know if the electrons in each shell matter as far as the numbers correctly because it was from a testing website where they say, well, here's the question, but we're not going to cheat and give you answers. It's the internet. I'm looking up the answers, not the questions. And I also like to point out the equation for the nth shell can hold up to two times the number to the squared power. So if it's the first shell, one squared is one, two times it is two. Okay, let's do this equation some more. We're in second layer, second shell, can hold two to the second power is four, times two is eight. So the outer, but, but, but that said that, that, that well, it's supposed to be eight, not six. So that's my equation problem. So we grab the 2, 6, 10, 14, and 18 and change that to 2, 8. There I just corrected the notes I made. So the shells are, according to one website, it said look for the error in this. That's where it came from, sorry. Test something, something. It's 2 on the inner layer, then 8, 10, etc. So if you have 2 plus 6 oxygen atom, there's two more needed. And if you put them next to each other, how are they sharing the extra electrons? So I, I, I'm still learning, relearning stuff I learned before. Anyway, I thought I'd just post this because it's me doing notes. And honestly, I just want to dump it onto a YouTube video and get done with it because save. I don't really want to dig into this anymore. Thank you for sitting through me doing this. Every once in a while I do a video showing people how I look things up and how I organize things for my notes or how I do a process of looking stuff up. Sometimes I just do a live video where I try to find out, okay, let's watch WAPTEC try to track down the meme or the origin story. Sometimes it works, sometimes I end up just doing a video like normal. But I thought I'd show everybody the notes I take and how bad they are. <laughs> That's what this video is. If I was to read my notes and only read my notes. Someone told me at one time, all you do is collect notes and cut and paste them and do verbatim regurgitation. I haven't heard that in a long time, not since high school. I don't. I normally go through and double check everything I do. This is me being as sloppy as possible and seeing how many mistakes you can find. You get to grade WAPTEC's work. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.